Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to my channel, Runaway Slave. I would like to give a big up to all my subs and supporters who like, comment, and share the videos. In addition, a special big up to all those who purchased my masterpiece, my book, The N Word is No Secret in the Service. Big up to you all. Let's cook. Okay, people. So one of the reasons why I created this channel was to curtail some of the trauma-based amnesia that our people deal with. We deal with so much as black people in America that we're to the point that our own trauma has become entertainment for a lot of us. One thing happens, that's gone. We're looking for the next traumatic story and the next one, and it's getting to be just another day in the life for many of our people. Now, on this channel, I recently covered a story about a brother by the name of Dow Mobile in Jackson, Mississippi. And it's one of the craziest, makes absolutely no sense. We know you did this stories that I've did in a while. There are quite a few on these channels, but this is one of them. Now, for those who don't know, here is a basic general recap of the Dow Mobile situation. So Dow Mobile, he moved to America from Sudan, okay? Him and his brother, they escaped war-torn Sudan. They're part of the group from Sudan called the Lost Boys of Sudan. Now, when Dow came, he was very young. He came to America. He did pretty well for himself. He went to school. He was a gifted soccer player, but an injury railroaded that right there. He eventually went to college. He was very gifted at everything he did. Everybody liked Dow Mobile. He had a very good spirit. Most people will agree to that. There are not many people who are going to say bad things about Dow Mobile. Most people say that he was a great person, a good spirit, always willing to help, happy. Now, at some point, Dow Mobile, he met this white American woman by the name of Carissa Bowley. Now, Dow Mobile and this white American woman named Carissa Bowley eventually got married. But after they got married, after a while, Dow Mobile soon realized that he made a mistake. This Carissa Bowley, she was not a motivated woman. She was lazy. She didn't have a career. She was not a good student. And she wasn't very successful at much of anything. I mean, the only thing that Carissa Bowley had going for herself is whiteness in America. And we know that that right there alone raises your credit score. So when Dow's in his relationship with Carissa Bowley, you know, they did everything together. They went a lot of places together. Uh, and Carissa Bowley was okay as long as she was getting her way. Carissa even went back to the Sudan to visit Dow Mobile's family at one point. Um, and from what I can see personally from Carissa Bowley, from looking at, digging into some of her stuff, she looks like one of those white Americans that plays the happy world peace, coexists, love is love, you know, BLM type nonsense. You know, she's one of those people. And I call it nonsense because I never believe this type of stuff. And I believe that Carissa Bowley is a charlatan. OK, and I and, and me personally, from what I see, Carissa Bowley is nothing but an entitled white woman from Jackson, Mississippi. And I do believe that she has a very dark heart. She's not even good at acting, a narcissist. Now, Carissa Bowley, her parents are professionals. Her father, James Bowley, is a professor of religious study, studies. Uh, in my opinion, he's a pretty weird guy. We'll get to that later. Appears to be one of those gloomy types. And uh, Dow Mobile and Carissa Bowley's dad, James Bowley, did not see eye to eye. They had some disagreements. I do not know the extent of their disagreements, but they didn't see eye to eye. Okay? And... Eventually, what happened between Dow Mobile and his wife, Carissa Bowley, is Dow got tired of being in this low vibrational relationship with this Carissa Bowley person. And to make matters worse, Carissa Bowley moved her drug addicted, unemployed friend into the house. And this didn't sit well with Dow at all. This friend didn't have a job, didn't pay any bills. And all she did was sit around and use drugs. Dow Mobile got tired of this, and after a few months, he put this friend out. Okay? It was bad enough with Carissa Bowley. Now she's got another one of these parasites 
sitting around the house collecting dust and using drugs. Okay? Now, the friend was not happy. Now, we don't know this friend's name, by the way, so if you know her name, get in the comments. The friend was not happy about being put out by Dow Mobile. Neither was Carissa Bowley happy that Dow put her friend out. In addition, people, Dow Mobile was getting really tired of being in this relationship with Carissa Bowley. So much that he expressed leaving this relationship with other people. He was tired of her. He was eventually going to get away. He's going to get out of this. He's trying to make his way out of this relationship with Carissa Bowley. There was a lot of turmoil in the relationship. And uh, Dow was even vocal <clears throat> with friends. He expressed to people that he knew that he was going to leave this relationship with Carissa Bowley. He had enough with her. So the story goes. Now, this is the turning point, people. This is the turning point. Dama Bill went missing in broad daylight on March 25th after he went for a walk on a trail connecting the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum to other city landmarks. Now, Carissa Bowley, his wife, she said that Dow left the home on March 25th at around 1230 and he went for a walk. He left his cell phone behind. She said it was not unusual for Dow Mobile to leave his cell phone behind. Again, that's what she said. Now, he went on a walk on his trail, connecting the Mississippi Civil Rights Museum with other city landmarks. Now, after Dow went out for this walk this day, on this day when Dow went out for this walk, he was never seen alive again. He did not come home that day. Being that he did not come home, Carissa Bowley, his wife, claimed that she was worried. Okay? She said that she was worried, but although it was pretty odd that Dow didn't come back all day, Carissa Bowley did not contact Dow's family or any of his people, his close people, like his brother, to say, hey, Dow didn't come home. She didn't do that. She didn't contact family. That's very suspicious. Dow's brother, Bullmobile, actually had to find out from somebody else from the Sudanese community that his brother, Dow, was missing. Dow's brother, Bullmobile, said he usually goes everywhere with his wife, and I believe that's part of being oppressed. So the day that he goes out on his own, he disappears. And then when Dow Mobile disappears, Carissa Bowley, his wife, never calls Dow Mobile's brother. She never called his big brother. His big brother had to find out from somebody else in the Sudanese community. So for this act alone right here, Carissa Bali, you are a suspect here. You're in the hot seat. That's very suspicious. The people need you to speak, and you will. You know, the people don't care if Capitol Police didn't make you a suspect. Carissa Bowley is a suspect here, and the people will bring her in for questioning eventually. She will have to speak on this. So when Dow Mobile's brother, Bullmobile, found out that his brother was missing, he hopped on it real fast. He got active. He knew that something was not right with this whole situation and with Carissa Bowley, just based off of how she responded to this tragedy and possibly some things that he probably already knew. OK, so now the big question is, where is Dow Mobile? He just disappeared in broad daylight, huh? That's what they're trying to say. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. So, people, eventually what happened was Dalma Bill's body was discovered in the Pearl River three weeks after he disappeared, 60 miles south of where he lives, 60 miles south. So what they're saying is Dow just went outside, jumped in some water, hit his head, and floated 60 miles south just because he felt as though that's what he needed to do with his life. That's what they want people to believe, that stupidity. So I first have to say condolences to the family of Dow Mobile, the real family of Dow Mobile. These Bowley people are not his family, okay? They are not his family. And I believe that these Bowley people had something to do with the disappearance of what happened to Dow Mobile. 
Now, during this time that Dalma Bill was missing, Carissa Bally, who was his wife, put us on this entire weird show. She wasn't looking right, you know. Her husband already disappears. She did not contact his own brother to let him know. Okay, she's in a white community in Jackson, Mississippi. So she shouldn't look right to anybody. But Carissa Bally is getting overdue to her white privilege. And people, this is Mississippi here. Nothing has changed, contrary to what they may want you to believe. Now, here's something else that we know about the disappearance of Dalma Bill. The day that he went out to walk, when he was first reported missing, the people have questions. Okay? The people have questions. Who is this guy here walking on the same path as Dalma Bill and following him? Who is this guy? Okay, y'all seen that. Who is this guy? Mississippi Capitol Police, Jackson Police Department, whoever. Carissa Bowley, who's fake crying in her family. Who is this man? You're from the community. You claim that you cared about Dalma Bill. Capitol Police, I don't know who you claim to care about, but your job is to do full and thorough investigations. Who is this man? Who is this man walking on the path that Dow went walking this day? Okay. Carissa Bally, the wife. This is a basic question that you have yet to answer. You have not answered this question yet. You have not pressed anybody to get to the bottom line of who is this man walking on the path when Dow Mobile was out there? Who is this guy following him? This guy walking around, has gloves on, he's maxed up, he has on a hoodie, jogging suit, it's 78 degrees, and he also met up with some other people dressed in black with face masks and gloves on. They were also seen taking something wrapped in a white sheet that appeared to be a body, carrying it, people. Okay? And what people who are really into this story believe is that Dalma Bill was ambushed by these people walking on this path. 
So again, who is the man with the mask and gloves on Capitol Police, Carissa Bally, James Bally, the community in Jackson, Mississippi? Who is that guy? Whose cars are out there parked that day? Was this looked into? And people, here you go. I want you to listen very close to Carissa Bowley here. Listen very close. She says her dad, her dad, okay, this guy, her dad, who had beef or disagreements with Dalma Bill, was on the walking path the same day that Dow went missing at 2 p.m. The day that Dow disappeared and was lynched, her dad was on the same walking path that day. Her dad, who does not like Dalma Bill, and Dalma Bill does not like him. Listen. Was this Ralph any friends that you guys may have where he could stop? Or? Uh, the only friend who he visits. Okay. Uh, okay, so when that first happened, I texted my dad because my dad had taken a walk uh, on that walking path at 2 p.m. Okay. And he did not see down on the walking path at 2 p.m. And then I also texted Timmy because Timmy is maybe the friend who he would most No, I didn't talk to her, but she may have called. But he usually visits in the truck. There are a lot of people that were calling him. Because, uh, I was in the wooded area. So if he went on a really long yeah, walk, walk, which at that point he had been gone a while, so I was like, well, if he walked a long time, he could have gotten to Timmy's, but also it's Timmy just also lives in the Yeah, he's yeah, like it's good. Really, right next to this is where John and Ellie used to live, right here. So he was like the, the most nearby home and also the most likely to have my visit there today at work. Even though Dad didn't have in some apartments on Rio Street. So, like, very familiar with this area. They would know us at those apartments. Some of the people would know us at those apartments. Um, but it's a dead end, so usually you don't walk, usually you don't walk down that area. Okay, you heard her. That's what she said. She said that. Her father was on this same walk path the day that Dalma Bill was taken and lynched. That's what she said. This is her dad here. Look at this weird specimen. Hello, friends. I am James Bowley from Millsaps College, and I am here to celebrate banned books. We all know that often it is people who say that they believe in freedom of speech and academic freedom who end up being the very ones who try to censor or ban or punish those who write or say things that they do not like. Today, I'm reading from Kurt Vonnegut's Slaughterhouse-Five, which was a book that was criticized for being skeptical and cynical and for its disdain for authority. In one humorous passage, it says that aliens came from outer space and read the Gospels and said that there was a fatal flaw because in the Gospels, the person who is uh, killed is the one who is actually well connected and no one would actually do that for fear of punishment. So the visitor from outer space made a gift to the earth of a new gospel. In it, Jesus really was a nobody and a pain in the neck to a lot of people with good connections. So the people amused themselves one day by nailing him to the cross. They couldn't possibly have repercussions because the guy was a nobody. And then, just before the nobody died, the heavens opened up and there was a thunder and lightning. The voice of God came crashing down. He told the people that he was adopting the bum and as his son, giving him the full powers and privileges of the son of the creator of the universe throughout all eternity. God said this, from this moment on, he will punish horribly anybody who torments a bum who has no connections. Thank you, Kurt Vonnegut. Hello, friends. I am James. Now, this guy here, this James Bally guy, to me, he seems like a pretty gloomy, sinister person. 
You know, I don't know him personally. He's a professor at the University of Religious Studies, I believe. He's also a converted Jew. He goes to a Jewish temple now, but he appears to be an all-around gloomy and dark-hearted weirdo. So people, let me tell you something else about this guy, James Bowley, who was Carissa Bowley's dad. This video footage that we have of Dalma Bill walking and somebody following him and other things, it comes from a place called Carter Jewelers. You see, there's a store, Carter Jewelers, whose camera recorded this footage of the man wearing gloves and mask, looking like a bandit, and others who were walking on that path, long sleeve, hoodie on, 78 degrees, following Dow. That's from a place called Carter Jewelers. And they say that allegedly, allegedly, this guy, James Bowley, Carissa Bowley's father, went to this jewelry store that had this footage crying, jumping up and down, and trying to get him, get them to give him this camera footage. Allegedly, this is what he did. That's very interesting. Okay, that's very interesting. And the Capitol Police in Mississippi have failed to show anybody this footage that we all have. We got it. Why not show it to the public? Why not blast this footage of this person out here walking around following down my bill at the time he was there to the public? They claim that this video footage is just a rumor. How is it a rumor when we're looking at it? So who's lying here? This right here is hardcore evidence. Chief Bo Lucky, this chief of Capitol Police, Bo Lucky, said that there is no evidence here. I never trust a white chief in Mississippi named Bo myself anyway. I don't know how you can get away with that, but it's Mississippi. People, nothing's changed. But what I want to say to Capitol Police is, why not get with your local outlets and blast this to the people? Why not show this video to the people? In addition, people, the weekend that Dalma Bill was lynched was Easter weekend. Carissa Bowley has two brothers who were in town to celebrate Easter with family. But it was definitely reported that one of her brothers actually left town on Saturday night, did not stick around for Easter Sunday. The whole family's there, but he left Saturday. He did not stick around for Easter Sunday, which is odd. So why was he in town in the first place? I think that's very suspicious. Father, father out on the walking path, brothers in town. So people, Capitol Police is under the Mississippi Department of Public Safety, the Capitol Police and the Mississippi Department of Public Safety dismissed Dow Mobile's brother Bull Mobile's request for an independent autopsy. People, this is a state agency. They filed a motion to dismiss Dow Mobile brothers Bull Mobile's request for an independent autopsy. Okay? And people, the Mississippi Department of Public Safety is still holding on to Dow Mobile's body. Uh, Dalma Bill's brother, Bull Mobile, called some independent forensic pathologists to conduct autopsies on his brother's body to get to the bottom of this. And the state of Mississippi blocked that. And Dalma Bill's wife, Car Carissa Bowley, and her family were not motivated about having an independent autopsy done. And that's very weird, people. Why wouldn't the family want an independent autopsy done? His wife, her family, they say they care but they're blocking an independent autopsy. Who would do that? Who would do that? People, they're trying to say that Dalma Bill's body didn't have any trauma to it. That's a lie. His body was very traumatized, very significant. And people, it's, it's so bad, I don't, I'm not even going to go over all of it. I'm not even going to go over all of it. But he had a dent across the top of his head, a knife stab on the right side of his head, a knife stab under his chin. His head was smashed with a large rock. He had on no socks, shoes, or pants when found. His feet were crossed and tied up. His head was smashed flat, and his head was jet black. 
The rest of his body was white. He had bruises on his stomach, defense wounds on his hands, a missing eye. They say he drowned. And as per their autopsy, his organs were in good shape. He had not been in the water for no longer than two days when found. So Clarissa Bowley and her family and the community in Jackson, this is what happened to Dalma Bill. Jackson, Mississippi, the state of Mississippi, Carissa Bowley, his, her family. You mean to tell me that after knowing this stuff, you don't want an independent autopsy? You don't want to know what, you don't want to get to the bottom of this. The community in Jackson, Mississippi. After this happened to Dalma Bill, you're not concerned that there may be somebody out here doing things like this to people, and you want to get to the bottom of it? You're not concerned about that. You're not even scared, huh? I wonder why you're not scared, the community in Jackson, Mississippi. I wonder why you're not scared or concerned. You convinced yourself to believe this drowning nonsense, okay, when this drowning is impossible when you based off the facts and the details in this situation. So listen here, people. Here's the thing. Let's cut the nonsense. Let's cut the nonsense. Uh, it's, it's crazy that with all the clues, evidence, and suspects here, we're even still talking about this. It's also wild that Capitol Police Department and their chief, Bo Lucky, have did nothing and haven't done a thorough investigation on what happened to Dalma Bill. And let's just go off of what we have. Based off of what we have, people, Dalma Bill's wife, Carissa Bowley, has never been thoroughly investigated. She looks very suspicious. She's the most suspicious person here because she is the wife. Her junkie roommate that she bought in that Dalma Bill put out, this is a suspect as well. Never been thoroughly investigated. Where is she? Bring her in. Carissa Bowley's father, okay, who Carissa Bowley admitted was on the same walk path the day that Dalma Bill was lynched and disappeared. He was never thoroughly investigated. Two brothers in town on the weekend that Dow went missing and was lynched, never investigated. Chief Bo Lucky needs to be investigated by the Department of Justice eventually, okay? We got video footage of a man with a ski mask on, gloves, jacket, 78 degrees, jogging suit, Texting, never investigated gloves, looking like an assassin. Now, here's something interesting, people. Why wouldn't they put this video of this guy out for the public to see and say, you know, does anybody know this guy? Does this guy look familiar? Now, let's just say, suppose, people, just, just suppose this, right? Let's say this guy here who was on video, right, who's walking in all that gear, looking like a ninja, just say he's a jogger. Just say he's a regular, innocent jogger, and he wears all that gear when he goes out and he wants to sweat and lose weight. Let's just say that. If that man was innocent, right, and he's seen video footage of him on the news saying, hey, we want to talk to this guy here. Who is this guy on camera? If he's seen that blasting out on the news, he would show up and he would say, hey, that's me. Look at the cameras every day. This is where I wear the job. I do this all the time. There's no foul play. I'm always out there. I jog with this on every day. They're not doing that, though. If that guy in the video was somebody who needs to be spoken to in a possible investigation for a murder, and he's innocent, believe me, he's coming in to clear his name. He would definitely be coming in to clear. If he's seen that video Blasted on the news, the local stations, over and over again. He would say, hold up, that's me. Let me get in here. No, no, I didn't know. This is what I do. But you notice the police have not put that video out for the public to see over and over. This is a person of interest. Why is he not all over the local news like they would put anything else over the local news? Why do y'all think? Capitol Police, Bo Lucky, Why? Who do these trucks belong to that was there that day that Dalma Bill went walking? 
Who do these trucks belong to? Okay? Who are the people seen on video that day on camera near this establishment? These vehicles, what are the vehicle makes, models, color, plate numbers? We can go to the DMV and look for every truck or car of that color and narrow it down based off the information we have. And we can get to the bottom of this. That's basic investigative work, people. These people have failed to do anything, and I believe it's for a reason. Why did Carissa Bowley's father go to that establishment, Carter Jeweler, fake crying and throwing a tantrum, trying to get camera footage of the man wearing a mask and gloves and 78 degrees heat in a hoodie? If you care so much, James Bowley, why aren't you trying to get to the bottom of who that guy is walking? If you care, that's what you would be doing. Do you already know him? Do you already know him, James Bowley? Where is the energy? Is that you? Is that, is that dude walking, is that James Bowley? How does a man go from crying and having a tantrum to get video footage to now when you have it, you don't want to know who the man is that's walking and looking like an assassin on a day that your daughter's husband was lynched or disappeared? Is that... Uh, is that guy one of your sons, James Bowley? Is this guy walking on video one of Carissa Bowley's brothers? We don't know. They need to do their investigation. You know? So, James Bowley, you can't be somebody that says, well, I'll just let the police do their job. That's the police investigation. Well, if that's the case, why were you at Carter Jewelers trying to be an investigator and get camera footage then, if that's the case? Why didn't you let the police do their job then? You can't use that excuse. Why isn't the Bowley family vocal about wanting to know? Where is that energy at? What, what, what's up with that, y'all? Think about that. What do y'all think? And if Carissa Bowley and her family cared so much about Dalma Bill, like they tried to do, on, you know, the fake on camera, why were they so much against his family having an independent autopsy? Why are they against that? Why would anybody be against that if they cared about somebody who went missing and this terrible thing happened to him and they wanted to get to the bottom of it? It just don't make no sense, people. It don't make Listen, people, the community out there in Jackson, Mississippi, they know what happened to Dalma Bill. I believe law enforcement knows what happened to Dalma Bill. Okay? Out there in Jackson, Mississippi community, Mississippi, you, you know what happened. And here's the thing, people. Here's the thing. If you're somebody that knows what happened, if you have clues, you know, if you have details, information, and you aren't at least presenting this information to somebody doing the right thing, okay, you are a part of the problem, and you're going to answer for this as well. You're going to answer for this. You have a family. You have children running around. You have a life, you're going to answer for this. Okay? If you're somebody who has information. And also, people, here's another important thing. If you have information on this situation and what happened at Dalma Bill, you cannot go to the local police and Chief Bo Lucky with it. Because as you can see, the police department, Capitol Police, they have not done a thorough investigation for a reason. What happens in these situations, in these small towns, when these things happen to people, when people who think that they are doing something to help, when they go to the police, the police often take this information and use it to cover up more tracks. So you may be thinking that, oh, I'm doing the right thing by coming to them, but no, you got to watch it. People, these, in this case right here, this situation Capitol Police did not do a thorough investigation and do their job for a reason. So the rest of that, you can use your imagination, people. They did not do a thorough investigation for a reason. So when you have information on situations like this, you have to hold on to it and contact the right people. Because just you going to the local police who are responsible for doing their job, who didn't, and you talking to them, could lead to some problems for you. So what you have to do in these situations is hold on to the information and present it to the right people at the right time. 
Okay? You got to tuck that information. Hold on to the clues and details. You know, hold on to it. Contact the family of Dalma Bill. Send emails to somebody of higher government agencies who may be looking into this, who may possibly be looking into this. Politicians that you may know, law, uh, legal services, or other people who are looking into this, who are doing something about this. But you have to understand, just think, the local police, which is Capitol Police, did not do a thorough investigation into Carissa Bowley and the other suspects for a reason. So use your imagination there. But there's a way to get this information to the right place. And Carissa Bowley, you are on trial. The people have put you on trial. You don't look right. You need to get on here. You need to get the talking or it's going to eat away at you daily. You're already suffering right now as we speak. You're losing your mind. The demons are harassing you. Okay? You're not as cold as your dad is. You're not as co- you cold, but you're not as cold as your dad is. You're a witch, and you will pay. You need to come clean with the information that you have. And the people in this community here, Jackson, Mississippi, or people who knew Dama Bill, nobody wants to hear that you will be missed buddy talk and all these heartwarming stories, you will be missed buddy. If you knew Dalma Bill and you considered him a good person or a friend, look at what happened. You need to do the right thing and get active. This story is absolute nonsense. Again, condolences to the real family of Dalma Bill. Easy.